Right, OK, can everyone hear me? My voice is a bit hoarse at the moment. Um, yep, good. Um, so this is uh, a project I did for an MSc at the School of Simulation and, and Visualisation at the Glasgow School of Art last year. So uh, the talk's going to be a bit of a, this is what I did last summer, but hopefully you'll uh, be a good uh, jumping off point to some wider topics which are hopefully relevant to this session. Um, it's based on... Pardon? Say again? Oh, oh, louder, sorry. I'll try. Um, <coughs> It's based on a, a case study, which is an archaeological site in Jordan, uh, run by the University of Copenhagen, which I've been excavating and uh, acting as a photographer for, for some years. Um, I'll give you a very brief run, um, run through the site so you've got some idea of uh, uh, where this all came from and what we're trying to achieve. So the site is over there, uh, we're up here. The main thing is to know we are out in uh, uh, the desert fringes of e eastern um, Eastern Jordan, and an awful lot of it looks quite like this. So, uh, not a particularly green uh, uh, and bountiful place, certainly not if you go in August. Um, however, if you go in May, it's a little bit nicer. But the reason why this is uh, quite important and why we're wanting to do an environmental reconstruction is the, the, the site we're looking at is a um, late Epipaleolithic site around the or origins of agriculture in, uh, in the Near East. And so uh, environmental changes and the d discourse about that is, is really, really important. Uh, the site, if you're interested, is right in the middle uh, of, the, uh, of the slide. Uh, and it's um, a small settlement site with multiple burials. Like um, most excavations uh, today, we have an awful lot of multi-resolution data and an awful lot of 3D data, which is absolutely superb, especially for, for uh, landscape reconstructions and uh, uh, that kind of stuff, but it's also quite complicated. Um, so this is a slide to, to, to remind us of how kind of... Uh, uh, environmental reconstructions would be done more traditionally and how, how we would argue it and, and, and what they represent. I think um, I've been working, uh, my, my, my particular favourite description of uh, what an archaeological illustration should be uh, is, is as a hypothesis machine. It's presenting arguments and creating a platform for people to discuss those. Um, but I also think it's important as we're moving into a more technologically enabled uh, way of uh, discourse and uh, presentation, that we remember just what these types of uh, single drawing, single scene um, depictions actually uh, allow us to do. They, they, they can bring an awful lot of information together in one place and give the reader uh, a, 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 an ability to read to a depth of their choosing. Uh, which is not always the case as we become more uh, uh, digitally based with our 3D presentations, our VR experiences and all that kind of stuff. Um, the getting, to these, uh, getting to the final point has all, already been mentioned. There's, always, there's an awful lot of stuff which goes on in the background to get there. It's a messy process. It's uh, archaeology and uh, negotiation uh, is taken from a, an article by um, Sarah Perry and uh, Mark Johnson where they're looking at... Um, the, the archives of Alan Sorrell, and uh, the value of these kind of discourses uh, within archaeology in, in, in future um, for, for both interpreting what the, the end result, but also seeing how our own discipline changes over time. But how do we capture this in, uh, in the current age, where a lot of our work is born digital, gets a, a little more complicated? Um, there are an increasing number of tools for doing this. Um, uh, at the top, we've got an example of how uh, uh, landscape visualisation is moving towards more commonly in archaeology. Now we're doing photorealistic renderings, uh, st still often uh, st still images, uh, but using very uh, complicated software, um, which is often quite removed from the discussions that were actually uh, are actually taking place. I saw a slide today about. Um, uh, archaeological reconstruction and again you have similar things to what we had on the previous slide with people drawing over the top of things but it wasn't it wasn't on a 2d drawing it was on a 2d rendering of a 3d drawing and we, we start to have these uh, orphan sets of different data types which don't necessarily link together which seem a little bit uh, strange in this day and age but of course uh, there are parallel developments in um, architecture of course with uh, building information model systems and an awful lot of integrated systems which are trying to link 
the different steps of uh, concept development from uh, conception to presentation. Um, uh, I'm not the only one who's been thinking about this either. Um, certainly, uh, I'll come on to what I've actually done, uh, but um, one of the, the main aspects is uh, using GIS and uh, Games Engine. And you know, had uh, Stuart Eve's um, augmented phenomenology for some time ago, more, more recent examples. And there's quite a lot of uh, very interesting work on um, developing 3D visualizations for buildings and containing those discourses uh, and uh, decisions over time. Uh, and trying to link those data sets or form those data in, in a way which can apply to current standards like uh, using the CIDOC CRM and those kind of things. Um, this is a brief overview of what uh, I attempted to do, uh, which was uh, to, to link QGIS to Unity through uh, Postgres. Um, and uh, the main point about this slide is the, 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 the visualization um, process is really still very, very messy and a lot messier than we actually like to admit a lot of the time. It takes an awful lot of uh, different types of software, different file formats, um, a lot of different skills as, uh, before you get on to the different specialists for the, for, for, uh, the different regions, uh, the, the different aspects. <clears throat> so, um, uh, at the heart of it, oh, sorry, I'll just check on this. So in this particular system, um, one of my, my central aims was to create multiple ways of interacting with the same data as part of the discussion. Because what we're seeing, uh, and we've seen on the other side, is people are developing more and more systems for trying to achieve the same aim, but those systems you've then got to learn yourself, whereas we've got an awful lot of specialists who are very uh, comfortable and familiar using particular software packages, which produce data which we are already able to archive and manage to, 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 to current standards. So uh, the, the basis was to, to have data which you can interact uh, and manage both in the GIS system uh, and in the games engine and for it to feed back. So as you're having a discussion within the games engine, you're feeding back data in a format which you know how to deal with an archive and you can see through your existing systems. Didn't work perfectly, but um, uh, it also raises the question of when we're going through these interpretations and building these ever complicated, really, I mean, they're quite expensive things to do to build these 3D, 3D landscapes, um, both in time and money and uh, cooperation. What is it that we're actually wanting to keep? Um, when, when, when you're developing uh, a landscape, for example, you, you will populate the landscape with different vegetation. You can use GIS tools to... Uh, develop uh, arguments for what kind of vegetation was there, you're bringing botanical information in, is what you want to pre um, preserve the final picture of, um, a picture of the scene that you've created? Or is it actually you really want to know um, an idea of plant density, plant species, plant distribution, which is a relatively simple information which we can store and link into um, wider, uh, wider data sets and, uh, of, uh, from other um, other disciplines as well. So we can link ourselves into the argumentation and discussion of other, uh, other disciplines such as uh, geography, geology uh, uh, and botany specialists. Um, but as I was saying before, a lot of the um, developing these systems, you suddenly um, come across uh, more and more challenges. Dealing with the data is not simple. So uh, this is uh, an example of the, the Unity side interface for handling, creating data, which were then spit back into the uh, GIS. Um, in theory, it gives you opportunity to start working and man managing things in four dimensions. And you can start uh, introducing multi-sensory uh, information such as spatial sound um, as well, but it's not something you can ever expect all of your colleagues to pick up and work on. So as we are trying to push for these more integrated systems, we have to be aware that we have to we bring everyone else with us as we go. And we can't expect them to keep um, uh, developing new skills uh, year on year. There's also the, the, you know, the never-ending challenge of changing software. The, when I, like two, two weeks before I um, finish this, there's an update to Unity, making most of my code completely superfluous. But, uh, So 
So, as I was saying, it's good to provide ways for people to, to interact in ways that they know. So there's a client-side um, uh, access for this. We have very limited controls. And most of the modifications was due through me. One thing I forgot to mention early on when we had the, the traditional two-dimensional um, drawing by, by uh, the artist is in those cases the artist plays the role of an interpreter. So they, they, they mediate between specialists to create a unified argument. Uh, and we still effectively have to have that same thing, not necessarily because of the skill of the artist, but as the previous slide showed, the complexity of the, the software. So it's mediation by technician rather than medium, mediation by artist. Um, um, the second half of the slide is an example of spatially uh, located comments, which could be tracked through time through the database. But um, makes me think of the, the previous two papers in the ability of tracking those arguments uh, over time. When you start to have spatially distributed arguments where people aren't interacting on uh, in a single chain uniformly, it becomes suddenly very difficult to, to work out what exactly has influenced what and when. Uh, and presenting that in the future in a way which is actually meaningful uh, and as useful as the hand-drawn comments on a hand-drawn map are to us today. And the, 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 the other point, the, the current uh, personal expressions of how we want to interact with the 3D data is, is not free. If you have a drawing and you want to um, suggest comments, you, have, you, you can interact on, this, on a level playing field, whereas the, as our visualizations become more complicated, you're cutting people out of the uh, interpretation process and removing part of the human element of the, 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 the um, creation. I'll go back to the landscape, and this point is a little bit contrived, but uh, bear with me. So you can see it's a very broad area. You can play spot the mountain if you like. But um, when developing the, the, the landscape, it was never raised that uh, we, um, when you're going around the landscape, you don't see um, the mountains. This is an example of a telephoto photograph with uh, a cut from an early development release. And, you know, the scale's all there, everything's in there, but you know they're there because you've used the GIS, you've seen all the, um, uh, the, the um, uh, you've seen all the, all the raw data. But if you were doing this, if you were starting from the point of view by communicating to an artist, you would incorporate different things. So the very act of the, 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 the medium that we use to discuss the visualization made us forget certain aspects of things which we might otherwise want to present. So our, um, our, uh, our arguments and interpretations are being mediated and modified by the platform that we're using to do it. Um, and another example of that is this slide here. The, the slide, side on the left was uh, universally uh, decided as completely wrong, couldn't work at all. Um, the slide on the right is like, yep, that's pretty close to what we want. They're exactly the same 3D space, 3D model, just a different camera point. Um, and the major difference on the slide on the right is, again, it's being mediated by the limitations of the software that we're using, and it's clipping planes of the hardware, is changing the appearance, and transforming the, um, the argumentation, but in a way which wouldn't be recorded by any of the uh, normal means of um, argumentation documentation. It's kind of an unseen, uh, unseen influence, uh, which we really need to be careful as, as we start to use more uh, 3D uh, and uh, computer-mediated um, processes. The, um, and uh, I'll, I'll finish on this saying that a lot of the systems which are being developed, certainly in the kind of architectural industry, use the, the final rep rep representation, the final rendering, as, as a bit of, a, of an afterthought. And that's similar on some of the, the, the other projects which people are working on, where they build the models to go into a visualization, and then they render it. But to me, it has, we have to make sure that whatever systems we use goes right through to the endpoint, right to the framing, and feeds back and uh, restore that in a meaningful way. So, that's it. Thank you.